Hi, on this video, I'm going to give you a little tour of our chicken coop. This isn't a how to build a chicken coop video. This is more of a here's what we did and maybe you can incorporate some of these ideas into your chicken coop build. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out and uh, we really appreciate the support. When we built this coop, I wanted to make it really strong because we're up in the mountains and uh, there's cougar up here, there's raccoons, possums, there's weasels, otters, bears, fox, uh, you name it, they're up here. And uh, we didn't want anything to get into our chickens. And I've heard so many stories of people losing their chickens to predators, either uh, predators going under the run and getting to the chickens or predators going through a door that wasn't latched properly or uh, there was even one I saw where uh, coyotes got on top of the run and were just ripping at the hardware cloth until they could get in. So I didn't want that to happen and I was really paranoid by the time we built our chicken coop. So the chicken coop is 10 feet long by four feet wide by six feet high. This chicken coop design is uh, for about six chickens. It'll fit them comfortably and the the uh, coop itself is uh, four by four and about five feet tall and that's plenty of room for six chickens. We used hardware cloth on the run. We stapled the hardware cloth to the run and then we put strips of cedar on top of that and then we screwed those in placing washers um, every other screw. So the hardware cloth it stretches out about two feet and then stretches out about two feet here, but that leaves a gap right in here. So I ran hardware cloth across here also, and then wired it to the other hardware cloth so nothing can get through there. And I did that on all four sides. We went with double doors on the run, and this has been really handy if you wanna just open the top door and add some food or throw them some treats. Um, and you can keep the bottom door closed which is really nice to keep them secure and they're not all running out at your feet. And then if you need to get in to clean the coop or get the water or do anything else in the coop, you can open the door as one door, which is really handy. There's a latch on the top door and a latch on the bottom door and each one of those have a carabiner. And then there's a latch that secures both doors together. We have air vents in the front of the coop and at the back of the coop, and this keeps good circulation going when the coop is shut down at night. On both sides of the coop, we have these windows that open. They have latches and carabiners on those also. And these windows have hardware cloth secured to the inside, uh, so nothing can push through there. In winter time, we have a plexiglass insert that we put in the window So this keeps the cold air out and the wind out during the winter, but still gives them uh, some light coming into the coop so they're not just trapped in a dark box. The main door to the coop has two latches with carabiners in those also. And this uh, keeps any predator from pulling the door open from the bottom or from the top. Inside the coop, we've got pine shavings, and then uh, we've got a little nest box that goes over here, and that has two little slots. Most of the time, they only use this one. And then we have a little perch for them to sleep on at night, and that's just a two by two. It's cracked there, but it's still pretty secure. And then here's a shot of the window on the other side from the inside here, and there's the vents. For the cross ventilation. The door from the coop into the run just slides up and down on this little uh, track here. I've got some eye bolts that it's hooked to on the door and then there's an eye bolt that the string goes through and an eye bolt where the string goes out through the other side. And I'll show you how that works. I have it uh, secured to this spoon that I bent and screwed to the coop.
Watch out, Winona. Come on out. Out of the way. Okay, so that's uh, how the door shuts. And then I have an extra security measure so the door cannot be lifted by a predator, and I'll show you that. So what I do is I take this bar <laughs> and I slide it through, through the hardware cloth and through that little bracket and on that little hook and through another bracket and that holds the door down. And as an extra precaution, I have this screw that I put down in here and then nothing can pull that out of there. So I don't think anything's getting in this coop uh, unless it's a bear or possibly Bigfoot because Bigfoot's got pretty good uh, dexterity with his fingers and he could pull that out and pull this out and I'm sure he'd be good to go. When uh, the door is open, the bar just stores beside the coop in that little rack and just rest on a brick down there and then the little screw I just put back in the hole. At the back of the coop we've got the nest box and again a latch on there and a carabiner holding that on and the two by twos are extended out so they drop over the nest box itself and keep any wind and rain from going inside there. The nest boxes are about 15 inches deep and 12 inches wide and then the front is 11 inches high and the back here is 9 inches high and uh, from what I read 11 inches or 10 inches is about right that way the chickens won't sit on the little bar in front and poop into the nest box and so far that's working great um, we do have one ceramic decoy egg in here and uh, all of our chicks have started laying just uh, as of last week Inside the coop, I've got a five gallon bucket, and that's their waterer. There's four nipples on the bottom. You can get the uh, four little stainless steel nipples from Tractor Supply for about five bucks. And thank you for demonstrating that dot, the rooster. Good job. We have a hanging feeder in the run as well, and that's hooked up to a chain also. And then have this little perch inside here for them to uh, sit on, and it's actually screwed into the little base uh, posts. We also have a dust bath in here, and the dust bath has dirt, wood ash, and diatomaceous earth. And these guys love this thing, and just have to clean it out once in a while. They get a little poo in there sometimes, but they love cleaning themselves in there or dirtying themselves, however you want to look at it. I do have another chain that I hang uh, cabbage from and corn on the cob, and they really like that. The cabbage is like a big wrecking ball, and they get that thing swinging and pecking at it. On top of the coop, we've got a metal roof, and that's just the cheap uh, roofing from Lowe's and then the run has the see-through roofing on it so uh, they can stay dry and still get some light down in there. I put flashing around the run roof just to kind of try to protect these 2x4s since they're not treated. I have this uh, four foot tall black plastic fencing that we use with some T-posts for the chickens to come out of the run and get a little more room to run around. I've kind of have it taken apart right now but normally I'll have the fence running over to the coop so I can just open the door they come out the door latches to the fence post and then they can come out and play around in there and get back in the coop if they want. I do have this waterer that I leave out here and then when it's really hot in the summertime I make sure that it goes in the run if they're going in there too because those nipples on the five gallon bucket they work really well but when it's really hot they need a lot of water and uh, i found that when i put this out they really go after this thing and drink a lot of water so i'm short on storage up here at the cabin and uh, for the pine shavings i keep them in this 
plastic 55 gallon drum and I built this little roof over the top. They stay dry in there and it works out really well. So uh, that's something you might think about if you're short on space. So we've come to the end of the tour. Thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully this helps you out and uh, maybe it'll help you with a future build that you're thinking about doing for a chicken coop or modifying your existing coop. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer the best I can. And I'd love to hear what you think of the coop, so leave me a comment on that also. From Almost Homestead, I'm Jay. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.